All right, here we are. Um, another day down at the salt mines, but hey, someone's got to do it. So um, this is my workshop. I built it in 1987, um, and um, I'd like to show you around, see what's there. So come on in. So here we are now. Um, uh, I'm in my workshop. Um, built it in 1987, uh, and it took me about two months. Uh, in what used to be an old tropical bird aviary that the previous owner had put up and had abandoned. So we had to strip off layers of netting and leaves and dig out all the concrete piles and, and uh, steel pipe that held it all together. And anyway, um, uh, a couple of months later I finally had my own workshop and life changed for the better when I came down here every day for work. So the, um, I guess every workshop sort of I won't say begins and ends, but good foundation is a great workbench. Um, I built this 20 years ago. Um, we were um, out of beach with some uh, pretty um, Goncalo Alves wood for my end vise. Um, nice show off dovetails there, which everyone loves. Um, but it's basically a beautiful practical um, uh, base for holding work in every possible which way. Um, it just gives me a lot of pleasure just to look at it and use it. Um, I like lots of storage underneath, so I've got a whole bank of drawers, a cupboard to put odd stuff in. Um, uh, great um, support for um, long work, which I can hold one end of the bike and support like edges of doors or whatever I want and plain work on them. So one of these, you know, I don't see them so often in vice, in, on workbenches, but um, they're one of the best, one of the best things you can put in. A lot of people. Um, have an ideal of a workbench in the middle of a room of their, of their um, uh, workshop and I like it actually against the wall because it means all my tools that I use all the time are just a, just a hand stretch away uh, and um, I do my assembly on a separate bench which, is, which I can work right around. <clears throat> so um, this is my collection of tools, <clears throat> most of which actually get used, one or two of which are sort of show off things but you know you've got to have them as well. Um, but uh, I've moved mainly to using Japanese chisels, so I have a, 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 um, a Harlequin collection of Japanese chisels, they're not a set, I just bought them as I've needed them one at a time. Um, my very favourite chisel, probably this fellow here, long handled Japanese pairing chisel. Why is it my favourite? Because it's always sharp. Um, I have a, uh, I won't call them a collection of planes, it's nothing like a lot of woodworkers have, but um, I try to keep things that are actually useful and things that I use all the time. So um, my very favourite plane is actually this made by um, um, Matheson of Glasgow, um, probably a hundred years ago, dovetailed steel sole. Now why do I like this plane when it hasn't got the rise and fall in the, uh, it, like the Stanley planes? Um, it's because it's, when you use them you just realise the weight and the lack of vibration um, and these plane just better and smoother and uh, more controllably than any other plane. Um, I've made a few little of my own planes for this one has a ever so slight curve, um, but it is beautiful for putting that gentle curve on sort of under stretches of cabinets and things like that. Um, and I have a little um, sort of roundy sold one, which um, interesting that I made. I used to make this, the lid of this box, this plane just fitted that curve perfectly. You can see that? Anyway, they have, um, they have their uses and um, even though you can buy adjustable ones for longitudinal curves, um, and these can work pretty well, there's nothing quite as nice as the um, one with a fixed curve sole um, to use for use, but these are okay too. Uh, this is my sharpening station. It's um, it's nothing fancy, but I'm I'm, I'm a convert to the uh, the Shapton Japanese ceramic water stones. Uh, they just seem to cut faster, and the stones stay flatter for longer. You don't have to flatten the stones nearly as often. And I have a 125, 500, 2000, 5000, and then I've got a King water stone at 8000. Um, because these things get really expensive and my brother-in-law bought me this as a present. Uh, so these are my principal machines um, and because of the way the workshop is set up I've grouped them in the centre 
Um, one little tip here, but when you're, if you're ever setting up um, woodworking, um, is if you have the jointer running this way, you can put the timber down on a trolley, leave it the same way, and you then can push it back through your thicknesser, and the grain direction that you sorted out on your jointer is then correct for running through the other way with your thickness, and you don't have to spin on your boards or anything. There's a handy tip. So I, I've, I've sized my table saw um, uh, diagonally across the, uh, the workshop because otherwise I can't get long enough boards uh, length for ripping and for cross cutting. Um, and I, I recently I set up a little spindle molder um, and I'm sort of running out in a sense of floor space but I realised actually what you need in a workshop is, is surfaces um, more than floor space. You just need to create little corridors where you can get stuff through. Um, lots of space in the workshop is actually just a waste. You don't need floor space, you need surfaces to put things on. This is my uh, uh, big Bertha bandsaw, um, and uh, I absolutely love this machine. Um, I restored it fully about three, four years ago. Um, I bought it from a, uh, um, a sort of machinery junkyard where old machines go to die, and I saw it looming in the, in the gloaming, um, and just loved its sort of profile and shape. Um, and um, it turns out that it's not even last century, it was but the century before that it was built too. So uh, it's a venerable old beast. Okay, open it up and inside you can see the um, uh, Makers Mark, the silver manufacturing company Makers Salem, Ohio, USA. And um, I dated this machine from on the basis of that and it's um, 1896. So not even the last century, but the one before. And it still goes well. It's got a nice little return spring, raising the pillar. It'll cut to 320 mils, um, and it's still on its original white metal, actually re-poured white metal bearings. So it's not even running on ball bearings. For people that like to know names of machinery, uh, this is a Wadkin. Um, a Wadkin Burr's Cream, so um, built in about 1950, um, great era for woodwork machinery. Um, this is my, uh, it's an SCM, this was like industry standard for every joinery shop in New Zealand um, 30 years ago, um, but it's a great solid woodworking saw. Um, it has a big heavy sliding table away from the saw uh, blade itself, so I can fit dado heads and things if you want that sort of technical stuff. Um, but the sliding table is incredibly solid and I can bolt any kind of fixture I want onto it. Um, a little Watkin Burr screen, very, very simple spindle molder, which is a, a nice machine. Probably my prettiest machine. I love to uh, stand here and look out at my lovely view out of the window. And I stand here with this big wheel and I sort of imagine I'm on a ship. And this is my steering. This is the steering wheel for the big ship. Um, it's got a great sort of, look at the lovely detail of the handle, you know, it's just made for human use, you know. They thought of everything, the lovely um, shape of the wheel, the fact that the, um, the clamp in front clamp is offset, it's not, it's not straight. There's so many little details that go into a really great machine. Um, and this is why well, I don't use it a huge amount, it's definitely one of my favourites. These, I, I, I built this workshop with a wooden floor, so it's a 32 mil thick. Um, Macrocarpa wooden tongue and groove floor um, because I wanted to be able to get, well two things, one I wanted to be able to get my dust down underneath the floor and out of an outside uh, extractor. The other thing is a wooden floor, uh, well it has so many advantages. Um, you drop your plane on it, you drop your chisel on it, they don't break, they don't chip. Um, really interestingly though, um, an unsealed wooden floor um, prevents condensation on your metal tools. My barn, which is concrete floored, 20 yards away, which is a bit further from the sea, everything rusts in there. In here, nothing rusts. Okay, so um, that was a little whistle-stop tour around my shop. My name's David Haig, as I think you might have guessed. Uh, and I'm, I'm a furniture maker, and I teach at the Centre of Fine Woodworking in Nelson, which is eight kilometres from where I'm standing. Um, and I also teach in Maine, uh, the Centre for Furniture Craftsmanship and um, I've taught at the Perth Wood School as well. Um, so check out my website uh, and have a look and see what I do and 